Hello and welcome to the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. This is my June wrap up and this is where I talk about all of the creative things that I've been up to, mainly knitting and crochet, but usually a few other bits besides. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Starry Eyes Alley and you can also find me over on my vlogging channel where I just talk about daily life stuff, decluttering, the mess of uh, redoing a kitchen and all of that kind of thing and that is over on this little wonderful life. Uh, what else to say? My name is Ali, have I said that already? I live in Kent in the very southeast of England with my husband who is currently upstairs working, my two daughters, one of whom is 17 and is still asleep so we'll probably emerge and try to get in at some point and my youngest who is 12 and is at school. I'm going to reach for my cup of tea in a kind of nonchalant way and just take a sip. Oh, my mug you say? <laughs> Look at my mug! So I, I sell badges with my little little drop of wonderful design and I had to go and order some more stickers because I always put a little sticker in with my orders when I post them out and I, I needed some more and as I was about to check out I fell foul to uh, marketing. It said, oh, if you add a mug with your design on it, it will only cost you something like £3.50. And I was like, oh, I will, I will take that deal. So I got myself a mug. They might be quite fun to sell, but I wouldn't know how to kind of scale up the manufacture of them and be able to sell them at a reasonable price. But if anyone is interested in buying it, you are a little drop of wonderful mug. Let me know, and if there's enough interest, maybe I'll get a few for the shop. But I'm very pleased with it. This is going to be like making a lot of appearances. This is actually my first time drinking tea from it as well, and I can report that it works perfectly. It works as a mug should. Oh, thank you all for being here and listening to this. Thank you, new and old, for coming along and spending a bit of crafty time with me. Sometimes. Uh, do you know when you catch yourself doing something that you do all the time, uh, whether that's filming a podcast to talk about knitting or crochet or uh, driving to work or doing the washing up or uh, trimming back something in the garden and you just suddenly catch yourself and you think, what on earth am I doing? What is the point of this? Who decided that this, <laughs> this was a normal thing to do? And it, all of a sudden, if you think about it too much, it just seems really weird. <laughs> I've been having those moments a lot recently. And sometimes I do think to myself, I'm sitting on my own in my living room, dressed, by the way, I've just noticed, slightly like a children's television presenter. <laughs> and you do sort of catch yourself thinking, what am I doing? What is this all about? And then I see the comments, and little conversations in the comments, or I'll get a message, or someone will say something. And I realise that that's what it's all about. It's all about this sort of connection we have as creative humans and finding like-minded people and it reminds me what it is that we're here doing this and just thank you for being here and for bringing your uh, your knowledge and your enthusiasm, your humour and your positivity um, to this little corner of YouTube. God, that was quite a ph philosophical start to the podcast, wasn't it? Don't worry, I'll bring the tone down nice and quickly, I'm sure. Right, let me just have a little look at my notes. So, this is the June wrap up, so we're going to look back. Last uh, episode, I decided that I was going to start moving to a slightly slightly uh, different format where I would uh, uh, set myself goals for the coming month and then uh, try to achieve them. So last episode, I set myself a whole list of goals and based on those, I'm going to go through things I've finished, things that are still in progress and things that I completely failed at. So I'm going to do that in a minute. And also today, by the time you watch this, is the first day, the official start date of the Strawberry Shortcake Mal, which I will talk about a little bit later. And yeah, I think that's it. It's the end of June already. I can hardly believe this. As I film it, it is Monday the 3rd of July. Yeah, Monday the 3rd of July. And yeah, I can't believe we're in July already. We're going on holiday in like three weeks or something. And I've just suddenly realized I haven't even sort of thought about packing or organising anything. Right, let's pop 
pop the tea down over here. I've got some straw little crochet strawberries here to celebrate the uh, strawberry, the strawberry shortcake mal. But I will talk about those a little bit later. That was just a little, little tempting <laughs> flash of a strawberry. Let's get started with finished things. So I do have a few finished things, and I am delighted because I think the reason they are finished is because I set the goal last time, which shows me that that has really, really worked as a kind of method of motivating myself. So the first thing I wanted to uh, do uh, when I spoke to you last was I wanted to finish my Across the Pond shawl. Oh, if you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I finished this some time ago now and I blocked it hanging on the line. I wasn't hanging on the line. I hung this on the line to block. <laughs> And it worked really, really well, but it's since been folded up for about a week. So here it is. This is the Across the Pond Shawl. It is a pattern by Mina Phillip of the Knitting Expat podcast. I used uh, West Green Loft Yarns in the colour Chock Chip, which I've had for years, at least five years, uh, for the main part. And the lace is done with a undyed sparkly uh, one from Rosie's Moments. So I'm just going to see if I can... Is that the right side? Yeah. So it's a texture, there is a texture to the body of the shawl. I think the stitch is called butterfly stitch and it's really lovely. It gives a really effective little texture and then there's this gorgeous lace border. I love knitting lace, love it. And I really enjoyed this. The only thing I slightly struggled with was by the end, of the uh by the end the like the final rows there was nearly 500 stitches on my needle so it was getting they were getting to be quite long and arduous rows and then the bind off i didn't really understand the instructions uh, it was for a two oh no it wasn't a two a cable cable cast on bind off i can't make sure you had to cast off and then cable cast on and then cast off again it creates a kind of pico edge it is very effective and i did and i do really like it but it took me a while to get my head around it and i think i might have made a mistake at the beginning because i had to go back and start again and so on but once i got into the rhythm of it it was okay and if it's wrong then it's wrong in a good looking way so i don't mind um and the butterfly stitch i got a bit confused with the instructions in the pattern but i looked at a load of notes in the project pages and someone had mentioned it was called the butterfly stitch so that I was then able to go and find a tutorial on YouTube and on my pattern page pattern page no project page I actually took some photos of how I did uh, of the process of doing it and put that with my pictures just to help anyone else and also to help myself if I want to make another one which I may well I don't know why I'm just doing this all the time so I actually just put it on I tend to wear my shawls like this with the front like that and then so I sort of put it on back to front and then bring the that's how I tend to wear them so it's kind of like a scarf. I really like it I've wanted to make this pattern for years and years and years and I'm so glad that I have and I was so motivated to finish it because I said last time that I would and I was like oh now I'm gonna have to I'll put it on like this as well so you can see it's nice isn't it Beautiful, really, really happy. I suppose you could wear it like this. I feel a bit Bridgerton now. <laughs> How not to wear a shawl? How not to model the shawl? So that is the across the pond shawl. My goal was uh, to finish it, and that goal has been accomplished. I'm really, really pleased making shawls. It's fun, isn't it? I love making shawls. I've got so many of them now, but they really are fun to make. I really do enjoy making things like shawls. Okay, the next thing that I finished was a pair. I said that I was gonna make a pair of my own pattern. My Heath Hand Warmers is a pattern that I spent a long time writing. I'm not a pattern writer, really. But I really wanted to create a pattern that I could use as the basis of a basic beginner's crochet tutorial. 
so that you could learn basic crochet stitches but actually end up with a little project that you could then use and wear rather than just a granny square or you know something that you can use to clean your glasses or something so I spent a long time coming up with this little hand warmer uh, pattern um, and I filmed a beginner's crochet tutorial to go with it so I will put a link to that underneath uh, it's completely free it's just on my channel I also wrote up the basic pattern on my very neglected blog and I'll put a link to that underneath as well. That is also completely free. And I also did a paid for sort of printable PDF with a standard size and a smaller size um, included uh, as well, which is I think three pounds. I think I priced it at three pounds and that's on Ravelry and my Etsy shop. And the reason I wanted to add a small size is I have really small, weirdly small hands. So I prefer to make something a bit smaller that fits a bit more snugly on my hands. So that's what I've done. I've made the small version. Just have another slurp of tea. I've had quite a morning. We've already had our builder in. Oh, the kitchen's done and I am going to do like a kitchen reveal once I've tidied it and we've got a few more things to arrive and still got to decide on paint uh, but the builder came this morning just to sort out a couple of little snaggy bits and he's also going to be doing some work in our washing machine shed so we were just chatting about that so there was that and then I had to go and talk to my neighbour about looking after the chickens whilst we're away and then I ended up saying hello to her cats and then we had a chat about wallpaper and then we were looking at her garden and, and then I came back and by then I really needed a cup of tea so excuse me while I keep pausing to slurp. Uh, so this is my Heath hand warmers. I will put them on, I'll take my watch off. I'm gonna put a little tab on the wrist end because sometimes even I forget which end is the wrist end if I've made them to pattern, which means that the, um, the, short, the wrist bit is quite short because they are hand warmers more than wrist warmers. They are designed to sit literally on your wrist um, and you can make them, I have sort of put instructions in the paid for pattern, you could literally just make the arm as long as you wanted, you could have it all the way down to here if you wanted, but I really wanted hand warmers uh, because I often wear them if I'm typing and my hands get cold at work and it really keeps my fingers free and my arms free but my hands warm and stop, stops them getting cold. So these are my finished Heath hand warmers. I'm really pleased with them. I made these in about three hours. Just sat, watched a couple of videos, chatted to the family, sitting on the sofa on like a Saturday or a Sunday. And um, yeah, they're really, really quick to make. You make them all in one piece from the bottom, the wrist to the top. And then there's instructions to just do two rows around the thumb just to neaten it up and tighten it up a bit. And that's it. So there's barely any sewing in of ends, there's no sort of seaming together, and it's all done in granny stitch and front post, back post, uh, half double crochets and double crochets. I'm talking in American terms, because I use American terms when I am crocheting. So that would be um, half trebles and trebles in the UK terms. I'm so happy with them. These are for me. And I can't wait for it to be autumn so I can wear them. And the yarn, which is the real star of the show, I don't have, I haven't brought down the uh, ball band, but I can tell you it's Cookston Crafts, who is an uh, Aberdeenshire based dyer up in Scotland. It's Cookston Crafts, and the colour is Dram, which by the colour of it, I'm sure you can tell, refers to, I mean, I'm assuming, refers to whiskey. Isn't that a gorgeous colour? So this year, these, this pair used 56 grams. It's fingering weight yarn and I held it double because the pattern is for a DK yarn. And I couldn't be happier with these. So it used 56 grams of a fingering weight yarn held double. So if I did the same again, I could probably make a small pair, maybe a missing one row and still get another pair. Or I could use it and maybe do a contrast cuff, contrast cuffs maybe. Um, so I might do that. I might make another pair with a complementary yarn and then use the leftovers from each to maybe do a stripy pair. That might be fun. 
So that's my next finished object. I'll put them here. How are we doing for time? We're away. And then I had another goal, which was to finish and frame a, a punch needle project and a cross stitch project. Well, they were finished, but they needed framing so that I could then display them or put them away for display later in the year because one of them is Christmas one. And I have done that. One of them I only finished last night and I had a slight issue. So this is the uh, punch needle. The, pa uh, the, uh, the pattern, yeah, the pattern and the kit. I bought from, oh, I always forget the name. Do you know what? My battery's just run out as well. So look, let me change the battery and look up the name and I will be back. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully the angle hasn't changed from where I had to take my camera off the tripod. I've looked it up. It's Simple Crafted Life is where I got the kit from. And I bought it from her stall at the East Anglia Yarn Festival. Um, and she did all different designs and you get a kit and you have absolutely everything you need in the kit It was really really good. You even got like a little practice bit of fabric and practice uh, yarns uh, You get a punch needle with three different sizes to it And you even get the felt to finish off the back You get a hoop to work with and you also get a hoop to frame it. So this is my finished thing I'm so pleased with it. It is not the neatest I have to say but for a first attempt I'm really really pleased and I can't stop touching it it's so tactile and I really want to do more of this I just need to um yeah find the headspace and the time uh, to do it but I love it so much I'm gonna hang this up somewhere in my house probably in the living room and I think the next one I do I might do something a bit more sort of in your face bright and I might see if I can use some of my hand dyed yarn to do it as well I think that would be really fun so that is now completely finished Really, really pleased with that. Let's prop it up there. Oh, is that gonna work? There we go. And the other one was my Christmas cross stitch. So this was a cross stitch from Pictures in Threads. No, that's not right. The World in Stitches. The World in Stitches. They do some lovely, brightly coloured cross stitch patterns. Uh, I bought this as a kit. Really, really enjoyed it. I was finishing this off yesterday, but I wasn't very pleased at how I was getting it to sit in the frame. So I made the decision not to put a felt back on it, just in case I wanted to make any adjustments uh, when I got it out uh, to display it at Christmas. But also, as I was putting it in, I noticed one single little half stitch missing. What can I use to point? I happen to have a crochet hook here. Where is it? Just there. It's half a per half a lilac-y light purple stitch missing. You probably can't see that. Probably no one would see that, but that's always going to bother me. So I'm going to have to go and find the threads and just add that one stitch. It's not even a full cross. It's half a cross where I've just missed one. So I'm going to do that. And then that's going to go away and can be displayed at Christmas. So that is another thing finished. There we go. Put my crochet hook back there. Put my watch back on. So that's three things that I had a goal to finish. And three things that I actually did finish. The things I haven't finished, but I did progress. So I wanted to make progress on my destroy the like button socks, so called uh, because they're named after the yarn, which was in turn named after a phrase that we were saying in some vlogs quite a few years ago. And the yarn was dyed for me by lovely Lorraine and she called the yarn destroy the like button. I have turned the heel, completed the gusset decreases and almost finished the foot of the first sock. I've also just got the yarn caught in the zip of my project bag. Oh my goodness, total disaster. Right, I've released the yarn and it's a little bit fuzzy, but it's intact. So that was close. Oh. 
Okay, so here is the sock. Oh, I should have bought like a little sock blocker down, but oh well, it's on my deep ends anyway, so uh, it would be a bit tricky to put it on there because I knit I knit my um, socks with deep ends. My new favourite being these ones, which are the Cubics Knit Pro Knit Pro Cubics. I don't have the little thing. Who makes Cubics? It is Knit Pro, isn't it? Knit Pro Cubics. Love these. Amazing. They have made my stitches look um, absolutely so neat. But I, I knit. I have the front stitches. Who was it I saw talking about this the other day? I can't remember. I keep all my front stitches on one needle and do the back stitches on two on the back. I find that if I use three needles and a fourth to knit, it keeps it much, much more stable and minimises the look of any ladders because they, the, any ladders kind of sit at a natural corner in the sock or on the bottom of the foot. So that's how I knit with my DPNs. But yeah, so I am... Look how lovely these stripes are. They're lovely. I love how you've got that wide light blue and then you kind of got grey double grey light blue. I just it's really like I really it's very very clever. It's beautifully dyed. She didn't even dye yarn to sell, it was just like a hobby. Really clever, and I'm really pleased at how the heels come out because I haven't done any contrast, I just knitting away with the yarn, and I'm really pleased how it's striped along the heel and how that's worked out and sort of minimal interruption to the stripes over the gusset decreases. And I've literally got to do about another half an inch and then I'm gonna start on the toe. So I've really made good progress considering I hadn't even finished the heel flap when I showed it to you last. So I think by next, by next, the end of next month, I want to um, finish this entire pair of socks. My sock mojo is somewhat lacking at the moment. So I want to get these off the needles so I don't need to think about socks for a while until my sock mojo returns. It all comes in fits and starts and circles, doesn't it? Sometimes it's all about socks, sometimes it's all about shawls, blankets. It all changes all the time. Where did I put my project there? Oh, yeah. So that is my destroy the light button socks. What else? Oh, I had a goal to start a hat. In a sp actually, let me, when I put this back in here, let me make sure that that is well and truly away from the zip, because <laughs> that was a disaster. Uh, I might move it actually, because I think this bag, this is one of my dodgy bags, I think it's a bit small, and I found another one of my dodgy bags that's a drawstring earlier, so I might move these into a different, but equally dodgy bag. Yes, so I wanted to start a hat. Uh, specifically, I wanted to start the Tenny Beanie, which is a pattern by Whimsy North and was a lovely gift from Nancy. I'm looking about thinking, where did I put it? I found it. It's in my lovely new bag from Estiva Designs, lovely Karen, which I've just realized I've managed to, look, what have I managed to get on my bag already? I'll give that a wipe afterwards but yeah so this is her logo it's got the most amazing chicken fabric and i've got a little pin on here a little knitting highland coo and this was a gift from our minty thank you our minty and thank you karen this is a fantastic bag i um it's got a pocket i showed this last time it's got a pocket in it here so you can keep all your bits and bobs but the pocket's got little tabs with poppers so you if you were knitting socks concurrently or two at a time you could have two balls of yarn either side of the pocket in the middle so they stay completely separate and don't get tangled and then you can run your yarn through here but if you need to get it out you just unpop it it's amazing however i'm not using it for socks i'm using it for my tenny beanie which i did indeed start and i am so thrilled with this so i wanted a really nice hat pattern to uh, use with this gorgeous yarn that I bought from one of our, my favourite UK yarn dyers, which is Third Vault Yarns, lovely Lola. And this colourway, it's a worsted weight and it's called uh, Unfath Unfathomable Depths. I find that word really hard to say. 
and I have started the 2x2 two two rib. I think I've finished it. It's quite a long rib because I'm going to make the version. You can make it so that you can fold it over, which is what I'm doing. I want a little fold, enough to have a little folded rim. And I've got enough now, so I'm going to start the actual pattern because I'm a bit worried. I don't want to run out of yarn. I'm sure I won't. But, uh, yeah. Look how the yarn looks. Oh, I just love it so much. Those golds and purples. And I love how, it, it's funny when you show it on camera, you can see a kind of swirly, stripey pooling, but you don't see that in real life. I think because it sort of differentiates between like and light and dark tones on the camera more than the human eye can. I say that like I know what I'm talking about, I have no idea. But you don't see that like in real life. I just love it. I, I really love how this yarn is working out. It's so soft and squidgy as well. I could just have a hat in two by two rib like this. It's so lovely. So I'm just knitting away on this. I'm using one of my little Alice in Wonderland themed stitch markers that I was sent recently. So the combination of my little stitch marker and the beautiful yarn and the lovely squidginess and the pattern and the project bag with the chickens on is just, oh, just lovely. What a lovely project. And I'm so pleased that I finally started that. And I've got a pom-pom hiding in here too to go atop it when it is finished. So my goal was to start that. Goal achieved. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> really, goal achieved. Okay, so that leaves two making goals that I set myself last time, which I have neglected. And that is to try the embroidery kit that I was sent uh, from Julie, which is this one from Hobbycraft because I quite like the idea of trying my hand uh, a few embroidery stitches, but I haven't, I haven't had the inclination to pick it up, nor the time. So I haven't done that. So I think this is gonna uh, go away for a bit and maybe get added to a future uh, list of things to do, because I've got other things I know that I want to do this month. Uh, progress on my ammer top. I have not knit a, not knit, not crocheted a stitch on my ammer top, which is living in my absolutely incredible bag by Eldon Woodcraft. Lovely Emma Eldon Woodcraft. I will link her underneath. She has a gorgeous podcast as well. She's a lovely human and an incredible bag maker. Uh, she's based in Somerset here in the UK and I've even got a matching pouch with all my little notions and I've got, it's got a little, I've just put a little thing on the zip to have some stitch markers and so on, which actually are all Hamilton themed. Not only that, but they're knitting stitch markers, so they're no good in this bag, are they? Because this is a crochet project. So someone made a very good point last time. So I've done my first square for this. So the Ammer Top, by the way, is a pattern by, is it by? Maria Vallis. It's a free pattern and it's a really simple crochet granny square top. So you basically make two granny squares, you seam them together and you do like some finishing on the arms and I'm assuming the neck, I'm not sure. I haven't read ahead. And I've done my first, I had two skeins of yarn, I've done my first uh, square and I stopped because I ran out of yarn in the first skein. So now I'm a bit worried I'm not going to have enough yarn. But somebody pointed out, I haven't actually blocked this yet. So this is going to get bigger. It's super wash yarn as well, so it is going to stretch and grow. So I do have that. So I might give this a bit of a block so I know what I'm working with as I'm doing the second square. Uh, but I've made absolutely zero progress on this. I didn't pick it up once. And this gorgeous yarn, by the way, is also Cookston Crafts. And the colour is Granite Speckle. So I guess that means we need to set set some goals, set some things that I want to work on uh, throughout July in the month to come. So I think from looking at all of what we've accomplished over the last month, I'm going to finish my destroy the light button socks, as I said. I don't want those to hang around for too much longer. I want to get those done. Um, like I say, my sock mojo's 
not really here at the moment so I kind of want to get the socks finished and out of the way I've got a feeling otherwise I, I, I'm going to get severe second sock syndrome and never finish them so I want to get those done in July and I'm going to set myself because obviously we always have to set an unrealistic target so my unrealistic target for July is finish the Amatop. top the thing that I didn't work on at all last month I'm going to finish next month now my unrealistic goal for last month was to finish the across the pond shawl and I didn't think I would do that and I did so let's see if this gives me the same motivation to say that say it out loud here and then hold myself accountable to it at the end of July let's see shall we uh, finish the tenny beanie so I've, I'm, I'm basically saying I'm going to finish three things in July I think we all know that's not going to happen so uh, what else? Oh, starting things, obviously, not just finishing things. We're going to start new things as well. I have bought the Contrast Blast socks, which is a surprise sock along uh, by Stephen West. I've never met, I've never made anything by Stephen West. And I saw on Instagram that he was launching this sort of mystery sock cow. And I immediately thought, wow, I could do that. I didn't really want to commit to doing the shawl because it kind of a bit scary. And also my friend Emma, uh, Eldenwood Craft, um, she had finished with a book or she had already made things from a book by Stephen West and she wasn't going to make anything else. So she's passed it on to me. So I've got West Knits, Best Knits. So it's got things like the Doodler, it's got Vertices Unite, it's got, um, what's another one that's really well known? exploration station everything like that so i've had a good flick through here and there's quite a few that i might be tempted to make but uh under my own steam and when i'm feeling a bit more brave but the socks i thought i could handle so they're called the contrast blast socks and i think it all kicks off the first clue is released on the 6th of july so that's only in three days and he says that you need two sort of tonal highly contrasting uh yarns and he did say 100 grams of both but I do knit a smaller size of sock and I have the perfect yarn, but they're 50 gram skeins. These were a gift from my lovely friend a while ago. I actually got three. One's orange, like a neon orange. And then I've got this neon yellow and neon pink. They, did, they are speckled, but I figured there's such a high contrast there that that would really fit the brief. The only thing I'm slightly worried about is, is um, 50 grams of each going to be enough? But then I thought, let's just give it a go. I can always knit the leg a bit shorter for example because I don't really like long legs in my socks but I don't know how these things work I don't I've never done a mystery knit along with Stephen West but I thought well we'll give it a go so this is my chosen yarn oh they're both by Cookston Crafts again it's like the Cookston Crafts episode this isn't it and they're just neon yellow and neon pink that's the names couldn't be more perfect and I you know I would really look forward to having a pair of socks in these colours so yeah that's something I want to start in July uh, are you joining in? Are you joining in with the West Knits Contrast Blast Surprise Sock Along? That's, I don't think that's the official name of it, but if you're joining in, let me know. I also want to start, and now this, this may be wishful thinking, but I mentioned in the last episode the Mellow Waves cardigan uh, by Dora Does. And I really haven't been able to stop thinking about that pattern it uses, I think, just under, well, it uses two uh, skeins of fingering weight yarn, but I don't think you even end up using the full, um, the full amount. And it's a crochet pattern, and I just, I'm really, really taken with it. So I would really like to start that. But I think I've set myself even more unrealistic targets than last time, so let's see. But th that's my official list. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> I also want to do an audit of lurking projects. So those bags that are kind of stuffed behind sofas, in cupboards, under the bed, in my podcasting box. They might have yarn in there waiting to be turned into something. Projects that I'm like, if I put it all in a project bag, that's officially almost like I've finished it. I think I'm going to sort of go about and see what I've got lurking so I can kind of bring those into my sort of making goals as we travel through the year and I'll have less lurking projects then so that's another thing so that is 
finish the destroy the light button socks, finish the ammo top, finish the tenny beanie, start the contrast blast socks, start the mellow waves cardigan and do an audit of lurking projects. What can possibly go wrong? Right, patterns on my radar. No, actually, before we talk about patterns on my radar, let's talk about the strawberry shortcake make along because that will lead on to patterns on my radar because I've got some sort of strawberry sort of mouth uh, make along themed patterns that I've spotted and a few others as well. So it officially starts today on the day that the uh, podcast is released which is Sunday the 9th of July and it is going to run until well throughout summer until the 19th of August. You can enter um, to win prizes by posting to the Ravelry thread which I'll link underneath or by using the hashtag on Instagram, which is on the screen now, or both. I will draw as many winners as I've got prizes and I will draw them equally from the Ravelry thread and the hashtag. So it was originally inspired by the idea of Strawberry Shortcake, uh, which is an illustration cartoon uh, series uh, from the 80s. Um, so my sister and I had all the dolls, so it was Strawberry Shortcake and she had all kinds of friends with names like Lemon Meringue and uh, Blueberry Pie and they, they were all uh, orange, short, red. No, that wasn't it. <laughs> they all had names that were named after kind of fruits and and things. Huckleberry Pie was one, he was the boy one lemon ada that kind of thing kind of summery fruity kind of names so the idea originally came from there but the idea of the mal is to make something either inspired you can go straight on inspired by strawberry shortcake characters or strawberry shortcake herself um i'll put i'll put a little picture up of what she looks like there are loads of gorgeous patterns on Ravelry, which I've shared previously of actual amigurumi makes if you're if you're into amigurumi as you know i am uh, but the Mao is more about projects inspired by sort of the fruits of summer, the sweet fruits of summer or the sweetness of summer. So things like strawberry shortcake, strawberries and cream, lemon sorbet. It might be an amigurumi representation of an actual strawberry like this one. And I will tell you the pattern for this in a minute because I've got it written down on my laptop and I can't remember off the top of my head. I just finished this this morning and I know strawberries aren't pink, but I had pink left over from a dress I made for my daughter and I love that sort of pink strawberry. Or it might be uh, using some yarn that reminds you or is named after a summer fruit or maybe a pattern or yarn that's named after your favourite summer treat or dessert like vanilla ice cream or pistachio ice cream which is my personal favourite or the colour is of your favourite summer fruit like mango or something you, know, you can really sort of be inventive with how you sort of bring it in but the idea is fruits of summer sort of summer sweetness a strawberry shortcake doll <laughs> It's not a rigid make along and all crafts are welcome by the way you can cross stitch you can sew you can crochet you can knit you can you could bake why not put it all in the thread on Ravelry or share it on Instagram uh, yeah uh, let's have some fun summer is my least favorite season I really really struggle with it um, I get very low I've been really really struggling uh, with low mood this year probably all to do with hormones as well. Uh, so this is something that's gonna pull out the good bits, the bits that are lovely and that can cheer us up. Um, and if you love summer, it's a way of really celebrating it. And if you don't love summer, like me, it's a way of celebrating it because um, that helps. That helps us, doesn't it? So I've been making strawberries, as you've seen, and I think I might tie in the Mellow Waves cardigan that I want to make with the make-along. I might find some yarn that I, I feel kind of represents the themes of the make-along, sort of pink for strawberries and raspberries or watermelon and maybe green or yellow for lemon cheesecake or lemon sorbet or, or something like that. I'm going to have a really fun look through my... Uh, yarn stash and, and pick some perfect kind of summery sweet colours. Uh, 
and yeah i've had some wonderful makers come forward and offer prizes so i thought i'd just let you know what i've got so thank you so much everybody i've just realized i've left them upstairs so one second it isn't actually cheese in this box which is kind of disappointing but what's in here is even better than cheese if indeed there is anything better than cheese Okay, so this is one of the prizes. So Di from Di Dye's Yarn um, got in touch with me uh, to see if I would like uh, some yarn for a giveaway. And what she was suggesting was so fitting for this make along. So I said, oh yeah, and she said, choose something for my shop. So I did, and she didn't just send me that. She sent me loads of stuff. So there were gonna be some very, very happy winners. Okay, let's get these out. Okay, now she says I can use these for whatever I want. So, she has sent me, if they're all ready to go. So in here is, this is so adorable. <laughs> Box of chocolates, anyone, as a prize? A set, you can't eat these, because this is individually wrapped five gram minis, there are 16 in here, so it's approximately 80 grams of superwash merino nylon. There's the, the label on the back, Dye Dye's Yarn. So I've got two of these, one's in a pink box, one's in a red box, and it's just the most adorable idea. So there's 80 grams would be more than enough for a pair of scrappy socks. You could do this in the lead up to Christmas, or you could do this uh, in the lead up to a birthday, or just throughout summer, help yourself to a little little chocolatey treat to make your socks and it's just a little mystery mini knit along it's just such a lovely idea so i've got two of those they're just so perfect for this now they're just like the perfect thing she also sent for me at least i think she said i could use them for anything but i think these are meant for me uh, they're little easter look at it she actually does sell this as a set in her shop as well she sells all of these in her shop it's like a little Easter egg nest. Got little lavender pillows there. And you get the little Easter eggs of yarn. It's just lovely. Very sort of Easter themed. So what I might do is I might pop these away to maybe if I'm doing April vlogs next year on my other channel, I could make something as I go. Or in the lead up to my birthday, which is at that time of year. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? Oh, I love that so much. And that she's even put on the front. Do not eat these. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try, I'll try to resist. Not only that, but, so these are, the, these are such good examples of strawberry themed things. She has sent um, the Dye Dye's Yarn Patisserie Cupcakes. I've got four of these. They're in little boxes, just like a cupcake would be. So you've got the, the ingredients here, which is the details. So this one is plum pudding. And then you can see at the front the colour in the box. So we've got plum pudding. We've got mango and pineapple. We've got strawberries and cream. And we have got oh, my favourite pistachio ice cream. Isn't that amazing? So if, I, if we've got the two little mystery chocolate boxes and four of the patisserie yarns as well. So that is six prizes there from Dye Dye Yarn. I will link her shop underneath. Please go and, go and show her some love. And if you're joining in with the mouth, these are some of the prizes, which is amazing. Like I say, I'm not sure yet how I'm dividing it all up, but I will, I will do it all so that you get equal winners from Instagram and Ravelry and put together little prize parcels. I might put one of the cupcake yarns with this that I'm about to show you because Conchetta from Butternut Handmade who makes the most gorgeous bags. When she got wind of the strawberry shortcake now, she said, oh, I'll send you a bag um, as a prize. And she, she does this every year for this um, 
the Strictly Sock Along as well and look at this. Look at this fabric. Oh, it's just so gorgeous and oh, it's just so beautifully made and the grey is actually sparkly, it's got like metallic in it. And inside you've got a little strawberry card. It's so roomy. Let me open it out to show you. It's a really good roomy bag and she's put pockets on the inside. It is gorgeous. And she also sent me a little strawberry pouch. How lovely is that? Oh, I love it so much. It's actually the perfect size to use as a little purse actually, which is what I might do. And she's put some wasi tape in here as well. Um, with strawberries on so I might pop that some wasi tape with the prize and keep one for wrapping up prize as well because I've never seen such gorgeous strawberry wasi tape thank you Conchetta so that's another prize I haven't finished yet though there's more uh, the skein of yarn that I bought that I showed before uh, which I haven't brought downstairs but I, I won't go running back upstairs again uh, I'll show that next time it's called I think it's called strawberry shortcake or strawberries and cream or something is beautiful. I'll put a picture up on the screen instead. Uh, and I've also got a couple of pattern prizes as well. So first of all, I've got the Bricks and Hearts set from Rel at the Dabbling Hook. This is a set that I bought myself recently and then uh, Rel said, oh, would you like a copy for a prize? So it's like, yes, please. It's, uh, she, she makes lots of things in chunky yarn. So it's a really, really quick knit. It's really, really pretty. She's done it with, um, She's made them with really nice contrasts, sort of variegated yarn uh, for the colour work. Really, really love it. I can't wait to have a go and make some myself. It's a hat and a cow. So we've got that as a pattern prize. And I've also got um, a copy of the Swiss dot Socks pattern by Nancy at Knits It Happy. This is such a lovely summery uh, pattern. It's really, really, really pretty. So I want to put a picture of that up as well. So I've got that as a pattern prize as well. I think that's everything. I think I haven't forgotten anything. I might have another skein of yarn somewhere as well that I might pop in. But um, yeah, so it's pretty good for prizes for something that was just a kind of off the cuff idea. It's going to, I think it's going to be a really fun make along. So let me know if you're joining in what you're planning on making hop along to the Ravelry thread or get on Instagram and use the hashtag I'll be really interested to see how you all interpret it and what you're going to be doing and what crafts so from this this is going to be so long isn't it how long have I been going mm, my goodness I'm going to talk about a lot of patterns now patterns on my radar this section that I've been doing for the last few months is quite a dangerous thing <laughs> because it really doesn't help with my level of concentration when my mind keeps going oh I want to make that but I also want to make that and what about that and now I've got 25 strawberry related patterns that I want to make as well so I'm just going to get my laptop and stop talking at 100 miles an hour and then I'm going to go through and tell you all about the patterns on my radar <sighs> this is going to take a while I have got loads I'm just going to open up I've got a, a sheet on my laptop with all the strawberry ones Let's pop this over here. I can see it there. Uh, but before I do the strawberry ones, I want to tell you about a few other ones. So first of all, I was nominated. Let me move a bit so I create a space for a picture here. I was nominated by Marissa for a pattern giveaway from Dana Ray Makes. I'm saying Dana Ray Makes. Is it Dana Ray Makes? I feel I'm going to go with Dana Ray Makes. So on Instagram, she did a kind of um, positivity and gratitude giveaway where you could just nominate anyone for a pattern prize and Marissa nominated me and I won a pattern from Dana Ray Makes and I wrote down what Marissa said and I feel a bit silly reading it out but I'm going to read it out because it was such a kind thing of her it was a kind thing of Dana Ray to do to offer that and it was kind of Marissa to take the time to nominate me and she said she is an elixir of positivity in a world that can easily get you down I never fail to smile laugh and feel better about life when I watch her podcast or see anything she posts thank you Ali and thank you Dana too have a wonderful June I just I, yeah thank you so much Marissa it was such a lovely thing to say because obviously it's nice to know that um that 
you feel a burst of sort of positivity from watching these videos because that is really really what I want because I don't always feel like that I sometimes feel really grumpy this past week I've really struggled and I felt really really low a couple of times I've just burst into tears and I have to say that if I find the videos the podcasters the channels that I enjoy watching it really does make a difference so um I'm glad that I can give something something along those lines out as well I really wish I was more eloquent in saying things but anyway all of that to say that I went and had a look at her patterns because I was able to choose which one I wanted and I chose her mini pops cap why have I moved I moved to put a picture up I'm gonna move back so I can put the picture on. So I chose the mini pops cow, which is a crochet pattern, but when she sent it over, she also sent me her mini stripes cow and her scrappy pillows as well. So I've now got three amazing scrappy crochet projects, which you all know I love a crochet scrappy project. In fact, here is a crochet scrappy project behind me. This is a this was a long time in the making. It's all scrappy yarn and it's a corner to corner moss stitch crochet fingering weight and uh yeah it took me a long time to make I would not make another one like this it was it took too long to make I prefer I think a bit of a, a stitch that works up a bit quicker maybe if I did it in a heavier weight yarn or held it double but I do love it it was worth it <laughs> So thank you so much to Marissa and to Donna Ray for that. I'm really, really looking forward to having a go at those. And then I spotted a couple of patterns on Instagram recently, which I haven't, that really, really grabbed my attention. Uh, so the first one is a worsted weight pattern by lovely Kumbi at Handmade by Kumbi. Uh, it's free on her blog and it's called the Spring Breeze Crochet Cocoon Cardi. And she, she put a video of herself up on Instagram and she was just holding it. It just looked like a, a rectangle blanket. But when she put it on, it was like this baggy, really lovely, breezy sort of cardigan. And it just looked like a really fun thing to make and wear. Um, so, yeah, that was one of the ones I wanted to share. And another one that popped up was by Nomad Stitches and it's the Vesuvius Tea. It's another crochet one. And I wanted to mention this particularly because she's running a crochet along for it throughout the month of July. Um, the pattern's inspired by Italian landscapes. It's really size inclusive and she's got a brilliant lookbook which you can download from the links in her profile which show all different uh, people, different sizes uh, and the versions they've made and how it looks when they wear it. It's made with fingering weight yarn and it's six pounds. So I really wanted to share that because I thought that was beautiful. I was also given a pattern as a gift from Annette. Thank you so much, Annette. This was such a surprise. She gifted me the Granny Go Round cardigan by Iron Lamb. Now I knew about the Granny Go Round jumper, but I don't think I knew about the cardigan. So I was quite surprised. Uh, by this and it's really really fun it's uh, usually five pounds and uh, as you can see it's a, a garment that uses the granny stitch and you could do it I think a lot of people have done it stripey or you could do it one color but I really love the look of it so thank you so much on it uh, I really love that and now I've been collating a few strawberry ideas so the first one again I've moved I need to leave room for the pictures Ooh. Now I've dropped my notes. Uh, is the Tweed Strawberry by Heather Pelletier. It's a free pattern and it's knitted. Uh, the next one is the Strawberry Cropped Top, which I thought was really cute and quite unusual. It's a crochet pattern. It's free. It's by Marianne Machado. Machado? It is a chart crochet pattern, but it's very simple. I had a look at it and... It, it's a very it's very basic stitches and a very simple shape so even though it's a chart um i think it should be relative it might be a good beginner chart not that i've made it so i can't really say with authority but i just thought it was a really uh, cute pattern then i found the strawberry heart by Svetlana Horova, which is another free pattern and uh, is crochet which i just thought was really really cute and then the one, oh no, that's not the one I did. What was the one I did? Hang on a moment, it's on my phone. Okay, so the one I did is by Rafa Musa Designs. And it is a really simple 
a little strawberry uh, and she just a large one and a small one so I've made a large and a small in pink and they look like this and the large one is finished and the small one just needs its leaves I want to make a gigantic one as well like a pillow <laughs> I had so much fun making this I made I made them in about I don't know less than an hour and I think I had the most fun of my life stitching on the little white seeds that was a very very satisfying thing to do those seeds I loved doing that I could do that all day uh, yeah so that is my first contribution to the strawberry shortcake make along 2023 <laughs> and that pattern will be linked underneath along with all of these patterns I'm mentioning um, also I've, I spotted the crochet strawberry plush by Heather Brook it's another crochet pattern that's free and she uses burnout blank burnout blanket yarn to make them so they're huge really like the idea of that and then another knitted one which is also free uh, is by Mina Metsanen for Navita Knits um, I'll put the link to Ravelry uh, and to Lovecraft for that one because there was a couple of links on Ravelry that didn't work it is a free pattern and they're really gorgeous and then there is the Berry Special Socks by Stone Knits they are obviously a knitted pattern and they are usually five I think it's five Swiss francs I don't I didn't recognize the sort of abbreviations for the currency but which would be about four pounds sixty uh, yeah so those were just a very that is just skimming the iceberg of finding sort of strawberry specific projects on Ravelry but you know it doesn't like I say it doesn't have to be strawberry it could be many many different um, variations of the thing so that concludes the patterns that have been on my radar I am now going to tell you about some winners I have three lots of winners for three lots of things to draw I've got to tell you the winners of my winners for the dodgy bag now I've got to draw the winners for the Kofi giveaway from last time and I've got two winners for the NFT towel pattern giveaway so we're going to start with the dodgy bag mail. Uh, we had in the Ravelry thread for the dodgy bag mail over 838 posts and over 170 bag pictures, which was amazing. Claudia drew the winner from the Instagram hashtag. She's already done that and announced it. And I, this morning, drew two winners from the... Uh, Ravelry thread. Now if you want to go on chatting about sewing and bags there is a general dodgy bag sewing chatter zone in my Ravelry group. I have linked to it from the 2023 thread so you can easily find it if you want to keep chatting. It is quite a uh, busy thread, a chatty thread and people do spend quite a bit of time talking in there about bags and so on which is really really lovely. So I drew the winners this morning using uh, our lovely AI friend, which a lot of us have. And I asked her to draw a random number between two and 838. And the first one that she came up with was number 233. And that was Jale Lala, <laughs> who is Janet in Illinois. And Janet made a fabulous denim bag with uh, old t-shirt and jeans, which I love. I love making bags myself from upcycled things that I have about. So well done, Janet. I'll tell you the prizes in a minute. And the other winner that was drawn was also in the 200s. It was 276. Misty Marked, who is a Varna in the Netherlands. She made a bag using a zipper from an old aunt's stash, a fabric from her stash, old jeans, and a fabric that she didn't really like, hidden as the lining which was brilliant. I love that. So I would have put pictures up of the bags that they both make. And I believe as well that Ivana's one, the print with the fox, was it a fox? Is from a, 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 a traditional fairy tale in the Netherlands. I'm sure that's what she said, but it was really, really cool. I liked it. So the prizes. You're both getting an ident almost identical, but slightly different prize. The only problem is they're not quite ready because I had to wait for um, some supplies. So I will show you them as they are. So I'm making you each a dodgy bag. They're gonna be almost exactly the same. One of them is, so they both, uh, this beautiful lobster fabric, which I have a lot of. So I intend on making a lot of bags of this. And they're both lined with 
upcycled old school shirts which have been thoroughly washed and ironed. Uh, so that's that's what creates the lining. And then I've got one's going to have a blue zip, one's going to have a yellow zip. And my fusible interfacing arrived this morning from Amazon. So I can now finish your dodgy bags. So that's what you're going to win. But inside the dodgy bags, you are going to have... I'm going to put in a, a pin each. I'm also going to put in some super colourful um, sewing clips for you, which I shall uh, put all together. I've got you both some really funky little snips for cutting your threads. You're both going to get the official Crochet Luna Dodgy Bag Mail 2023 badge to put on your dodgy bags. And then I have got these wonderful pins from Crochet Luna as well. So you can identify what is in your dodgy bag, a sock project or a sweater project. And there will also be a few other little treats in there as well, maybe a few edibles. So what you need to do is get in touch with me on Ravelry or via email. My email is always in the description box underneath this video. Uh, I prefer not Instagram because the Instagram messages are really hard to stay on top of. So Ravelry or email and let me know your address and I will get your prizes sent out as soon as I've made them. And congratulations and thank you to everybody who joined in um, with the dodgy bag mount it was a fantastic year there were some fantastic bags it was amazing so thank you everyone for joining in okay nft towel winners i have two copies uh, well one copy of two each of two patterns of the nft towels by uh fiddles and giggles fiddles and giggles yeah, Fiddles and Giggles, Anastasia at Fiddles and Giggles. It's a crochet pattern and uh, I've got the Zoom meeting one and the flower field. And the idea is you make a tea towel and then you can, she gives you the pattern for over stitching these faces or in this case the flowers. And there's instructions in the pattern for how to do that. And you can kind of customise it with your colours and how you choose to do it. So they're really, really cute. So I went in, so the, uh, the, why can't I talk? I told everyone if you wanted to be in with a chance of winning a pattern to include the water emoji in your comment. Uh, so, and then I went and drew some random winners from using the comment picker. And if you had a water emoji in your comment, I knew that you wanted to be in. The first five times I drew a winner, um, it drew me. <laughs> so I stopped filming it at that point because I was like, well, this is ridiculous. I just had to keep going, draw again, draw again, draw again, until it eventually came up with the winners. So the two winners are, oh, wrong page, uh, Nancy, Nancy Aldrin2573. YouTube is doing this really weird thing now. Oh, ah, cramp, cramp. It's gone, it's gone. Oh, and now a magpie's flown past. Good morning, Mr. Magpie. How's your lady wife? Oh, it's all gone wrong. Cramp and a single magpie. I can hear Lilia's up now as well. Okay. So yeah, YouTube's doing this really weird thing now where it just shows your kind of your YouTube username rather than your actual name. So like loads of people who are recognised for your usual YouTube handle, it's kind of changed. And I'm like, oh, that's a bit weird. I don't know why it's done that. So anyway, Nancy Aldrin 2573, you are one of the winners. And uh, Wild Cottage Knitting Island, I went and had a look, she's got a lovely looking podcast, so I might have a lovely looking channel, so I might go and have a look at that later. You are the winners, so I will randomly decide which one you will get. If you do have a preference, let me know, but if you both pick the same one, I'll just do it randomly. Uh, and again, just get in touch with me um, by email or Ravelry, and we will arrange for Anastasia to get those sent out to you. And finally, I've got the winners, the two winners of the Kofi giveaway. So last time my video was sponsored by Kofi. Thank you, Kofi. And they provided me with a promotional link. There were a few problems with the link, but I think we got it all working in the end. And then uh, I picked a ra random winners from the list of people that had signed up. So the random winners for the Kofi giveaway were 
uh, Nittingden, which is Ivona in the Netherlands, and A Crafty Yarn, which is Samantha and Caitlin in Australia. And funnily enough, these are both podcasts that I mentioned in shout outs in episode 100 as well. So I know exactly who they are and how lovely they are. So both of you, I will let Kofi know that you are the winners and they will transfer your winnings to your brand new Kofi account. So watch out for that. Um, so thank you Kofi for that and thank you to everyone who entered all of those lovely giveaways and so on. That only remains for me to finish with and finally, which is all of the bits that we mop up with at the end. So just to say that all the prizes from the episode 100 giveaway have been received now and everyone seems very happy so that's good and also I wanted to mention that Nicola Knits who you may recognize a lot from nearly all of the chatter threads on Ravelry uh, she's really really um, chatty over there and really really helpful she has started her own knitting and crochet podcast it's brilliant I'm gonna link it underneath go and go and have a watch it's like she's been doing it for years already. So that's Nicola Knits. I just wanted to give her a bit of a shout out. And I also wanted to mention that I recently, my latest video over on This Little Wonderful Life is all about the books I've been reading and listening to. So if reading is your jam, make sure you go and check that out. I've never said your jam in my life. <laughs> but if it is indeed your bag, your jam, then please go and check that out. It, um, you might find some books and audio books that you might be interested in. And finally, I've reopened my Etsy shop because I now have use of my kitchen table again, so I can start parceling up orders. So I will link that underneath if you're interested. Um, as usual, I've got to the end of the podcast and I just think that all seemed really boring. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed it. I will see you again very soon with a Christmas jumper update. I did have someone ask, um, what's happening with the Christmas jumper? It's all going on in the background and I need to film an update because um, I'm filming videos for a Christmas jumper I'm making throughout the year separately. So watch out for that. I need to pull my finger out of that a bit. I'm so slow. It's the decision making and actually getting the project off the ground that really slows me down. So I'm glad that I've decided to do this as a kind of project to hold myself to because otherwise it just wouldn't get done. Uh, yeah, so watch out for that. I'm going to shut up and go and say good morning to Lilia, or rather, happy lunchtime to Lilia. And I'll see you again next time. Until then, happy knitting, happy crocheting. Bye.